Hello everybody and welcome! Well, this is something else. I've... First of all, this thing wobbles around like crazy and I have no idea why. But let's get back to the story at hand. I've read about a challenge on Reddit where you should try to capture a satellite in orbit around Kerbin and bring it back to the surface. In one piece, of course. Well, I decided maybe that's a little bit too easy, so I thought let's first of all try this with an SSTO space plane, which I really don't like to make because they're tedious. I also thought that Kerbin orbit may be a little bit too mundane for this purpose. So, this is sort of my satellite catcher plane thingy. And I'm now getting it into orbit. As you can see here, we've already switched to the closed cycle of the Rapier engine. And, well, our apoaps is high enough so we can coast to it in, well, quite a relaxed fashion. This is the thing almost already in orbit. You can see that the crew cabin has heated up nicely, which is kind of weird that this thing gets heated up so easily because you have to put it in front. Before we can get to our destination and the satellite we want to capture, we first have to do some little refueling. And in order to do that, we're going to meet, well, somebody or something that you may have already seen on this channel. So now that we're circularized at around 80 kilometers above Kerbin, we're going to plan our rendezvous with, well, our destination. You can see in the top left hand I'm using Kerbal Alarm Clock to plan my interplanetary transfers to wherever I need to go. And here we are! We have a familiar face or a familiar shape in the background. This is, if you remember, the Franz. My ring space station that I brought up a few videos back. If you can take a look in the top right hand corner, you may have noticed the little YouTube icon where you can re-watch that episode. Okay, on approach for docking. So you can see there is already stuff going on at that space station. So we have a crew SSTO hanging up there, we have some sort of small transfer vehicle, and then we have some sort of interplanetary nuclear cruiser thingy. And no, they're not ornamental at all. Yes, they are. I thought the station would look nice with some other spacecraft hanging around. Literally. Let's use our RCS to get in there. Let's try to dock inside the ring. Because outside is so easy. This is looking good in every sense of the word, I might add. And so the satellite catcher is closing in on the central spoke of the Franz. The purpose of this maneuver is, of course, to get some more fuel. Let's have Jebediah take a look outside the window so we can, well, time our docking approach with a little visual cue, so to speak. I think this looks nice. We should have more, way more things in orbit, like orbital installations, shipyards and whatnot. I want a huge infrastructure in orbit. We are now docked and then it is of course time to transfer some fuel, which I skip because it's boring. And once we're back in the sunlight, there we are. 
we're going to get away from that station and prepare for our transfer burn to Duna. Yes, this thing has enough power to get to Duna, grab something and get back to Kerbin. As long as you refill it in orbit. Look at that. That's a beautiful transition. Getting away from that space station. Here we are already performing our transfer burn. I'm using, of course, the nuclear rockets for efficiency. I have transferred only liquid fuel into the tanks of this little space dumpster truck SSTO thingy. And while we take one last look at Kerbin's sunset, so to speak, our maneuver is now, well, almost ready. We have an encounter, it's still a bit wonky. Okay. Yes, and with the RCS enabled, I got a very nice encounter at Duna. There we go, goodbye Kerbin, we're gonna be back. Boom! Here we are at Duna after many 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 days in space. And, well, quite cramped in that crew cockpit up front, I might add. I hope Jebediah and Bill are okay. But in order to do what we need to do, we are going to have to perform an aerobraking maneuver, or aero capturing, actually. Reason being, I don't have enough fuel to do a powered insertion. So I really have to time this right and get into the atmosphere and reduce my apoapsis as such so that I have a stable orbit around Duna. Okay, we're on approach. This could be tricky because Duna's atmosphere is, well, not as dense as Kerbin, so it won't be as violent as an aerobraking maneuver there. But on the other hand, you have to consider that it is, well, not as high as Kerbin, so you have to get down really, really low. And if you're unlucky, you might hit something, because there are some high mountains down on Duna. This is looking promising so far. And fiery. And Ike in the background. Some clouds, yay! But then something, well, weird happened. I might have kind of miscalculated how the aerodynamics perform when, well, it's not as full with fuel as it was in the beginning. So maybe the weight distribution is now kind of off and aerodynamics are all over the place. But on the other side, this increases the aerobraking power even more. So, yeah. Looked weird, but it was a win-win, well, just a win situation for me. Ike stays firmly in the background. And now we are already back in the safe zone out of the atmosphere. Great! We are going to raise our apoaps and try to match... Hey, look! It's an eclipse! It's an Ike eclipse! Nice! Where was I? Yeah. We're going to, well, raise our periaps and try to match our orbit with the satellite we're trying to capture. Or the space junk we're trying to get back to the dump. The dump in this case being, of course, the space center. This is looking like a nice rendezvous. One more orbit around Duna. Look at that, I never can get enough of that. This looks so pretty. I really like this. Okay, hello Ike, welcome back. There we go, we have our satellite, you can see it's on the right side, coming in hot. So we have to match our velocities. 
Oh, we overshot a little bit, but it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Nuclear, en nuclear engines are of course not as powerful as the rapiers, but it's okay. Closing in on that satellite, or communication relay, or whatever you want to call it. Trying not to hit it. We want to get this thing back in one piece, not in pieces. Okay, time to open up the cargo bay. As with any dumpster truck, you put the trash in the back. But before we can do that, of course, we have to grab it. The satellite has no RCS of any kind, so we're going to need this little fella. And it is a claw with some probe core and, of course, a docking port. So this little mini tug is going to pull the satellite back into the safe confines of the cargo bay. But in order to do that, we have to, of course, get the solar panels back retracted, so they don't get in the way. What I'm doing here is I'm aligning um, the probe and the tug so that the claw can catch it flush in the back. In order to do that, I kind of uh, aimed the probe anti-target and may, uh, aimed the tug probe, also a probe, on target and well in the end it looked like it worked out fine and yes we have a connection with our satellite that we need to bring back. So the next order of business is of course getting this thing into the cargo bay. It's a bit harder than I expected because the center of gravity is really not aligned with the RCS system. But in the end we managed to get it inside. I may have also tried to, you know, use the space planes RCS to maneuver this thing, uh, the cargo bay over the satellite, not the satellite inside the cargo bay, but I managed fine. So there we go, it's safe inside, so we can close up the back and think about getting back to Kerbin. This of course took a while of maneuver planning and so on, and I'm going to skip through that and boom, get straight to the burn. Nuclear engines of course, firing like they should. And once we've spent enough delta V, about 1000 meters per second, something like that, 1100, we have our encounter with Kerbin. It's still not ideal, so I'm once again using my RCS to nudge it into the right direction. But you may have noticed that the color is a bit well, different than it usually is when you're doing an interplanetary transfer. Reason being is, I got an Ike encounter on the way. Look at that, there we go. We're going to pass Ike in well, high orbit around Ike, of course. Not really in orbit, we're just flying by. Bye, Ike. Bike. Which reminds me, it's starting to get sunny outside so it's time to dust off that bike and other sports equipment and get out there don't watch youtube videos with some weird guy talking to you about weird space planes with little green men inside okay enough about that rant we're back in the sphere of influence of kerman and we already are in a safe orbit this is nice but i don't have a lot of delta v left so yeah, since I did a powered insertion, because I was really afraid of uh, error breaking this thing in Kerbin's atmosphere, I decided to, well, just do the first uh, insertion burn with my nuclear engines and then lower my app. Whoa! Okay, we just lost one RCS module and we have some flippy stuff going on again, I might add. So the reason for this is 
probably, or so I thought, uh, that, well, the center of gravity moved way too much to the back. So after a few passes, and after I managed to get the apoaps down quite nicely, I decided to land that thing and before I did that I transferred some fuel. So I tried to put all the fuel up front so the center of gravity would move forward, so the center of lift would not kind of get in front of the center of gravity. Otherwise, well, you've seen what happens. Okay, this is looking okay now. So no fuel at the back and a beautiful sunrise over there. Okay, I have put some time acceleration on there, so well, time acceleration on the video, not on the game. So this is maybe a look a bit hectic to you, but I thought it was a bit boring to just watch the entire descent. And yes, we're well, we're approaching quite nicely. So this is a bit for well, look at that. That probe wants to get out there. Hmm. We're now over the oceans west, no, east of the Kerbal Space Center. And we have enough liquid fuel left so we can do some, some flying back to the KC and don't have to rely on our gliding capabilities alone. And once again, that satellite wants to look what's going on outside. It looks a bit weird, and I'm not going to tell you what this reminds me of. I'm pretty sure some of you guys will figure it out. Okay, so we're on approach on the runway. And well, there are two problems I realized at this stage of the mission with my spaceplane. First of all, it handles really sluggish really slight. And second of all, putting that much weight on the tip of the wings may not have been the brightest of ideas. And you're going to see why just in under a minute. Okay, we're on approach, some flaring, maybe a bit too much, but doesn't look that bad, and yeah. I think there was too much stress on that wing. So I tried again and again and again and again and again and again and again, again. And the result was always the same. No matter how steep or slow or fast I came to the runway, at least one of the wings always broke off. There we go. So yeah, I'm afraid I can't land any better. At least with this thing. But on the other hand, the mission in itself was a success because we brought back a satellite safely inside our space plane back to the space center from Duna, I might add. Okay, so, well, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider subscribing if you didn't already. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.